Hey folks, welcome to Man Cave Makings with me, Gus. Well, if you've been here before, you might have noticed a little bit of a Man Cave makeover has happened. Uh, it's 2020, the start of the year, and this is the first video of the year, and the upgrade has happened. Uh, a little bit of LED sprinklings over the top just to make it as look as nice as I can make it. But this video has got nothing to do with a makeover and everything to do with my wife's Christmas present I made her. Uh, I, well, I, I say Christmas present. It, it didn't happen on Christmas. I more New Year's Eve. But uh, she loves it. I love it. And it was been an amazing learning experience for me. Um, a little mini Bluetooth speaker. Um, they're pretty standard these days. You can buy them from most sort of retailers these days, but I wanted to make something very bespoke, very, very um, unique to my wife as well. She likes kind of like mid-century modern stuff, uh, trapezoid shapes and things like that. Um, and I thought I'd incorporate all of these things, not quite knowing what I was getting myself into at the start. Um, I didn't have a table saw, for instance. <laughs> so I reached out to one of my friends who very kindly offered his table saw as a loan. Um, well, I still owe him some beer, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, and I had to make loads of stuff for this project. Um, and I'll cover those in other videos, but uh, this video is all about the actual speaker build, each of the individual steps I took just to make the little box that houses all the speaker and all of the electronics and everything that goes with that. I learned a load. I hope this video, you can take some nuggets away and use them in your workshop. That's my main aim for these kind of videos. So without further ado, let's get in it. So breaking down the main sheet of uh, the birch ply was relatively straightforward, just with my circular saw and a straight edge. So these little cross-cut sleds are invaluable for doing this type of work um, and I made mine with these little sort of strong arm hold downs. Um, I, I'm not that sort of um, used to using a, uh, a saw like this so I want to make it as safe as possible and by uh, using these little clamps uh, I think I managed to achieve that just perfectly well. So this won't be the very first time you see me cut glue cut and glue uh, but essentially it's about uh, getting this uh, first cuts onto the 45 degree angle um, and, and being quite liberal with the glue uh, but using a little roller to make sure that that is consistent across um, all, all of the pieces just so when you get that squeeze out um, it's uniformed and you get a good glue up. So using another one of these little jigs I made um, on the 45 this time um, against the fence using these little strong arms um, I managed to then recut the slab into 45 degree um, pieces. Uh, these are all sort of 18mm by 18mm just the thickness of the plywood um, just to keep things square. From this little chevron pattern you make, you're then then flipping that back over onto the 90 and cut recutting again this slab, um, and then from there you're then flipping each individual one alternatively, which then comes up with this squared kind of diamond shape, and then from there all we're doing is resetting, regluing, making the panels, and recutting them to the right sizes. So to keep myself right, um, to make sure that I was cutting the right sides and the right faces, I decided just to mark everything up, which was invaluable. Making the trapezoid shape requires you to make a greater than 45 degree angle cut. In my case, it's 62 degrees. In your case, it might be something completely different. But you definitely need a vertical crosscut sled for this. Uh, but you're only setting your blade once. You leave it at 62 degrees, and then all you're doing is then flipping your reverse cut onto the horizontal and passing it through the blade. Okay. 
quite a tricky wee operation here of making rebates so the front and back faces which hold the speakers in could recess into the box. Um, got a good bit of blowout on the actual faces here and had to re-glue bits of it, but you know, it came out good in the end. Once I'd cut the front and back faces um, with the hole saw, I was then able to use my roundover bit with the router to expose the leading edges of the uh, circles um, on the plywood, which then really draws your eye into the speakers, which is just exactly what I was looking for. It's getting close. It's getting quite excited now uh, because it's a wiring time. Um, and essentially we've got two main boards. There's a PCB and there's a power board. Um, I've had to make quite a lot of modifications to this power board. Um, I've, I've demounted the, the cell groups off the back of this board um, uh, just so I can fit it physically into my box that I've got here. Um, I'll stick all of the links to all of these kind of uh, little items in the description, so go check that out. Um, but yeah, I, I've got a volume control into here and a little bracket, which I'll show you, um, as a, a, a volume control knob with incorporated now a, a little LED on off switch. So that's going to be awesome. And it looks kind of cool on there as well. Um, We've got uh, a passive speaker at the back here, plus the two main drivers, uh, and I'm hoping all this is now gonna come together. So we're gonna get on with the wiring, get this thing finished. By far, the most trickiest little thing I think I've ever made um, was this little volume control button, which then incorporated the on-off switch. But a little bit of CA glue, a little bit of Araldite, and hey presto, we've got ourselves a working volume control switch. can't have any leaks out of the box uh, you need to have it hermetically sealed so using some sealant um, around the speakers was the first step in doing that. think about how to put this back onto the actual box without any screw holes um, I decided to give a, a go at making a silicon seal um, now um, this took a load of time like probably a lot of time but forcing the silicon down into the little groove that I'd, I'd made and then holding the whole box together with these little clamp worked out really well and then so satisfying actually just peeling this back to reveal a very nice clean edge um, of, of the, the seal itself
Sometimes you make something and you just look back at it and you go, ah, I did, did I make this? Is, is this my, even my work? You know, um, I absolutely love, love, love this thing. And, and more importantly, my wife loves this. She uses it every day in her cabin where she does yoga and listens to music and, um, you know, she just absolutely loves it. Um, what a little punchy little get up and go this has got, you know, this will get a party started. I'll tell you that for nothing. Such a little powerful unit in such a small little compact space. Yeah, really, really good. And I wanted a little bit of furniture kind of look to it that, you know, you could sit somewhere and it wouldn't, you know, look out as a place. And uh, and I've, I think I've certainly managed to achieve that with this little box. Um, I, I must take a few minutes out just to thank uh, a couple of people. All of this sort of uh, work here with the plywood and getting it shaped and into these kind of uh, squares, I can't take any credit for that whatsoever. I learned that from a YouTuber called Michael Arm and he has got a fantastic resource. Um, his YouTube site is amazing. Some of his YouTube videos are just, just tasty, really tasty stuff. Um, and you know, he's inspired me to make this uh, mini speaker out of um, this marquetry with the plywood. Um, this shape, this overall shape, um, these are basically two trapezoids on top of each other. And I, and I learned how to make the sled that cut this 62 degree angle here from another YouTuber called Chris Salomon of Four Eyes Furniture. Um, amazing. Uh, website a really really good resource and and yeah he he just is an absolute boss when he, he he talks about the the actual making of stuff and obviously footwear you know he's he's got some decent footwear uh, i will give him that uh but again these guys inspires me the, the to, to go make stuff and and do a different twist on things that you may not think about and that's the purpose of youtube for me it's a great resource to go and learn and i hope i just hope that somebody's taken something from my videos and and used it in their own workshop um i love to hear from you guys all makers love to hear from their audience and uh, and i'm one of them so please you know shoot me a like uh shoot me a message leave something in the description and discussion uh, i i'd absolutely love to hear from you if this is your brand of vodka for instance and you're not subscribed consider hitting that bell icon at the same time when you smash the subscribe button and if you are already subscribed well Thank you very much indeed. Um, I absolutely value you being on board with Man Cave Makings. And as always, well, I hope to see you again. <laughs>